Growth marketer, marketer reacts, react analysis, creator analysis, critique, creator critique. This is Marketing Muscle, where growth marketing strategy and a strength training mindset collide to help you grow stronger revenue as a creator or solopreneur. Let's rep it out and get growing. Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Marketing Muscle. I am Mike Phillips, as always, your personal growth marketer. But today is not an explainer edition. I am not going to lecture at you. Today is a creator critique. It's a reaction, analysis, deep dive into people out there doing their creator thing in the creator economy. We're going to look at things like profiles and offer ladders and funnels, and we're going to deconstruct it through the lens of how I would look at it as a growth marketer. Because marketing that works for large companies and small companies works in the creator economy too. And it's not that complicated. Don't tell other marketing friends of mine that I said that. No, seriously, like marketing is not actually that complicated. It's a little bit of an ivory tower sometimes. We, we, we feel like it's a fancy thing to know, but you can do it. And I'm just gonna go through from a creator's perspective the things that I see that are working well, some areas of improvement for different creators, and this is gonna be a new series we do on this channel. So today, we're gonna to dive right in with Nadine Hare, who is a friend of mine and a member of the gym community that I run. Let's go look at Nadine's LinkedIn profile, start from there as if we just discovered her as a creator and see where this reaction takes us. Let's get going. So I'm gonna take you guys through this like we just discovered Nadine in the feed on LinkedIn. This is how most creators get found. The algorithm serves up something awesome, or maybe we just get a link to a post sent to us or a video sent to us by a friend. And we have our first impression of the creator through a piece of content, but that's not where the journey ends. It's where it starts. And maybe knows several things very well here that I am thrilled to kind of jump into, right? So when you look at a post on LinkedIn, right? You've noticed that you get your content down here. This was a live stream that they did, but always you have a profile picture, your name, and this headline above every single post that you do. This is like a call to action for people to consume more, right? This is an excellent opportunity for somebody who has discovered you, discovered you and is consuming what you do passively to begin consuming actively, to start binging, to go deeper down what you create. And that's the first step to building trust. So think about this, your profile, your name and your header, that shows up every time your content appears in the feed on LinkedIn. That's an incredibly valuable piece of real estate. And I think Nadine does this really well. Again, your face is a wonderful thing to have there. Nadine has hers front and center. She uses a little bit of an AI art technique, which I think is kind of a creative element for her. I like that it's a bit different. Um, the name is clear and straightforward, easy to read. Um, and it shows here that she has a headline of chief writing officer at WriteWiser. I love this for so many reasons. One, she's already establishing a brand. Chief writing officer is not a standard job title that you would see anywhere, but especially on LinkedIn. What I think is amazing here is that she's already positioned herself as an expert because not of the words that she used or the job title she created, but because she's able to create this ethos of a chief writing officer, it's showcasing creativity, but it's not off the wall creativity. It's directly relevant. And again, if she's selling, which she is as a creator, something to do with writing services, because again, chief writing officer at WriteWiser, I kind of sort of get what the offer kind of is. But again, this is not meant to convert the offer. This is meant to convert discovery into deeper consumption. And so far, I have a curiosity gap established. This is the thing that clickbait was meant to be that people just ruined about it, right? One weird trick to whatever, and then you click on the thing and it's not even a one weird trick for the thing that you clicked on. That's bad clickbait. Good clickbait, and I hate that we made that word a pejorative, but good clickbait is you inspire curiosity, you leave a gap, and you reward that gap immediately. That's happening here. LinkedIn's headlines are limited with how many characters they show, but you can write more than that. And you get this little dot, dot, dot here at the end. The benefit of this is you are immediately rewarded with the rest of that text. When you click on a person's name, you can see right here, this is a hyperlink to her profile. 
Um, when you click on a name, you are immediately able to go to the profile and you'll see the rest of that headline. Immediate satisfaction. This does two things. One, it makes not bad clickbait. It's good for LinkedIn. That's good UI design, yada, yada. But it's a moment of trust filling. You've promised I will say more and then they get more right away. That's a very valuable first step in moving people from just, eh, this is cool, keep on scrolling, to Nadine is cool. I want to follow Nadine. And this, let's go in and let's say we are impressed by what she writes about here and we click on her name. Again, this is a call to action. This is a point of conversion on every single post that you write on LinkedIn. And quite frankly, it works this way across many different platforms too. So let's say we discovered Nadine through that post. And I said, you know what? This is a great post. Chief writing officer, that's curious. I would love to learn more. I click on the profile and I'm looking around and my eyes immediately scan and take in several things on her profile, right? First, you saw that profile video pop up. That's a limited feature. LinkedIn had this available for a while where your profile photo becomes a video and it's about 30 seconds limited. If you had that feature and you had a video in that spot, it stays there. Nowadays, if you didn't have it to begin with, it's been closed down temporarily um, slash indefinitely. So you may not be able to put that specifically there, but whether it's a video or a photo, this is incredibly valuable real estate because when we look at something, the first thing our psychology does is to see eye contact. There's a human face here. I'm looking at it. If there was a human face in the banner and not here, I would look at that human face. Nadine is building trust because there is a human element to her brand presented right there. Also, she's brought in a wonderful brand cohesion. Do you see this green border she's put around her profile picture? That's not a LinkedIn feature. When she designed the image file to upload into this space, she included some of her forest green branding into that. It doesn't contrast very, very well on dark mode. Um, and I'm a dark mode fan, mostly because it's less glare on my glasses, <laughs> but uh, it is cohesion. And I think it still works even in dark mode, but that green would pop a lot if I had this in a uh, standard light mode. Speaking of the branding, when you scan, you scan face, you will scan the banner, and then you will go back to read this headline, kind of in that order, right? So again, I'm looking at this through the lens of a customer. That's what growth marketing does, is we look at how does a customer interact with something and how do we understand the way they think to get them to do, hopefully, what we'd like them to do from a business perspective. What I see here is eye contact and I immediately have brand cohesion between the artwork and the colors and what I saw here, which is good. When there is pattern recognition, when there's familiarity, we have less mistrust, our defenses come down. This is where trust gets built. We have a little bit of green. We have similar artwork here to the background of her photo. I like that that's here. That's worth it for the trade-off potentially that her face is slightly smaller than it otherwise would have been had she not put those borders. The con is her face is smaller. And so when your profile icon is really tiny next to a piece of po like next to a piece of content that you've written, it's harder to kind of identify. But even still, we are pretty good at even tiny icons. We create associations with it. And the nice thing too is like LinkedIn puts your name next to it. So it's like, oh, it's the face and then the name made in here. That's enough, I think, to create an association. So the trade-off, in my opinion, is worth it in this scenario. Again, so now we've got the green and the color over here. This copy is so important for anyone, but especially if you're someone who is a writer selling writing services and writing knowledge. So what Nadine has here is the name of her business, Write Wiser. A, alliteration. I love alliteration. Be still my word loving heart. Um, write Wiser. And your voice, our words. In six individual words in this banner, I know who she is and what she does. I have a general idea and that's enough. I'm skimming, right? If you put a paragraph up here, I'm not reading it. I don't trust you enough yet. I just found you in the feed. I'm not giving you that much attention. If I have to work, I have options, not time. I'm not giving it to you. Nadine respects that. This is skimmable. And it also provides information, information that is built on as you keep reading. So your voice, our words, I understand that she can write in my way. It won't sound like somebody else wrote it, but she can do it for me. It's her words. Awesome, awesome. I now have context. That's all I wanted. I wanted context for who you are, and I have it already. When we jump down, we now continue skimming here beneath the name, Nadine Hare, Chief Writing Officer at Write Wiser, Marketing Content and Copywriting for Global Brands. 
excellent. There's way more character space available. If you go in and edit your header, you can put like three, four lines in here. And it's not wrong to put more, but every piece of copy you put needs to do a job. What she does here is provide more depth for what this copy in the banner is. Your voice, our words. I kind of get the idea, the gist of what that is. I have context. Marketing content and copywriter for global brands. I'm now building this, this hierarchy of your voice, our words, marketing content and copywriting. Oh, she can write in my voice, marketing content and copywriting that I need done for global brands. She can do it around the world. I have more context. I now understand even better. It's been this layering approach of getting more intimately of, aligned with Nadine. As a service creator, as an educator creator um, versus an entertainer creator, all of this is so important and it's so well done. Um, you need to be able to start stacking trust because while as fun as it is to consume content on LinkedIn, LinkedIn's not a monetizable content platform. You need to be able to build trust and inspire people to want to take action on that trust within an offer that you've developed. Whether it's merch or a piece of software or a service or a course or a book, Nadine's already starting to do that. Now, the other things that LinkedIn does here is kind of interesting. So she's got her top voice badge on, which is great. That's earned by writing meaningful contributions that are uh, not upvoted, but, but, but engaged with by other people in a given topic area. So she's a top problem solving voice. Badges and proof are always a good thing. Proof, proof, everything in your profile needs to be proof because this is functionally a landing page for your brand. They have discovered you. And now this is the first point where every bit of traffic can come and then filter out whether it's a repeat customer, a brand new customer, a potential new follower. You're going to serve all these different people throughout what you do in your profile. So I love this. Hashtag cats. If you follow Nadine, you know her content's got a bunch of cats as a through line throughout all of it. She writes about writing, but the cats are part of it. It's a beautiful way to hearken that. I think, honestly, you select these hashtags. And a lot of people are like, oh, uh, corporate leadership and do, 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 do. No, her first one <laughs> is hashtag cats. Immediately, I know that she's not a dry corporate talking head person. She's, she's a human being, and I love that that choice is there. But then she's got meaningful other topics. She, right? She's got writing, copywriting, content marketing, content management. That's above everything else, above the fold. I haven't scrolled yet. I know exactly what she does and what she writes about, what she cares about. This is great. This is a well done beginning of impression. Um, as we go down the profile, there's this hyperlink here, right? Join January content cohort. And I have to say, I love alliteration so much. Right Wiser was one of it but join January content cohort. You have a limited character count up in here and you, this every bit of writing that a writer does on the profile, it's important for everyone. But this type of creator, if you're a writer as a creator, if you do blogging, if you do Substack, if you do medium and, and threads or whatever you do, every bit of writing you do is itself a small case study of your ability. So this is itself a little masterclass on how to use micro copy. Um, it's a January content cohort. But I, it's a call to action with double alliteration, and it immediately tells me that it's an offer. These are great because you can have these, uh, one of the few ways that LinkedIn like doesn't penalize you for having people leave the platform. Um, because sometimes you put links in comment, content that doesn't distribute as well. Using this is important. That's why you need to think of your profile as a landing page, and that's what Nadine does really well. You got two options here, though. You can do a custom copy like this, which I think Nadine made the right choice. It's very smart because it gives her a chance to show off her ability to write. Or you can choose one of those, visit my website, view my blog, et cetera, stock buttons. It'll look just like these buttons down here, like the message, save sales number, et cetera. Um, the perk, if there is one, is if you say view my website, when you write content, when you saw the name and it said Nadine and it said Nadine's headline, if you have the stock button with premium on LinkedIn, you'll be able to have a call to action that says visit my website in every post. I would trust the data on which is right for you. Um, Nadine, I think, is doing strategically a good choice here. But what I would do, as you should do this too, is put UTM tracking codes, if they're not, on this link so you know where your traffic's coming from, from whatever post analytics tool you've got, um, whether it's Google Analytics or some other website uh, tool. Um, know how much traffic's coming through this link and compare. Do a couple months with it like this, a couple months with the visit my website, and just see where things go from there. Let the data inform your choice.
Because after a while, everybody can have opinions, but the only opinion that matters are whether your attention becomes followers and whether your followers become customers. It, it's not up to us, it's up to the people. And we need to listen to them through what actions they take. But let's go further down the profile. Um, this is our relationship summary, but I, I have to talk about Nadine's feature section. Off the bat, the branding. We have the forest green right here again, and it's consistent. Look at just, just it's just brilliant. The fact that the line goes all the way across all images, so well done. The fact that it's the same green from the header is important too. Pattern recognition, we're building trust. We saw the wording in the header go to the wording in the green. There was the green in her profile pic, green in the header, green down here. The consistency and the rep repetition is important. The world's inherently random and it upsets our brain on a primal level. When we see patterns, it is soothing. Our trust increases and Nadine is building trust. I haven't even read the things yet. I'm already just more, I'm just comforted by the fact that it's here. So LinkedIn lets you put several different types of things in your featured section. You can have a near infinite string of your favorite top performing posts. You can have articles that you've written on LinkedIn because LinkedIn has a newsletter feature. You can have um, uh, photos and carousels and documents and all the different types of things that you can do on LinkedIn. But my favorite thing to do, especially if you're a creator, this is a landing page. These are your links for different stages of buyer journey. These are off-platform hyperlinks and Nadine has used four of them here. And I think this is very interesting. If you do one, it fills the full width. If you do two, it splits at 50-50. If you do three on desktop, you can see all three and on uh, mobile, you see two and you got to keep scrolling. You see one and you keep scrolling. Um, but this is great because she knows her buyers. She knows different stages of people need different things. And she's ordered these in order of importance. Her first one here, this is her lead magnet. This is a download, a process guide. It's an offer. If you've trusted her enough and you followed her content, you've engaged for a while, the most, uh, the, the, the smallest leap you can make is an email for a thing that's free. That's a beginning of reciprocity, right? You've, you've, we've had curiosity gap, gaps being satisfied. This offer reciprocity is the very beginning of building trust. I think this is really well done here. If you're gonna use a lead magnet, that's a great place to put it right up front. The lowest risk transaction should live here. Next, we have a, a further explanation. Again, we're, we're following what happened further up in the profile of what is a chief writing officer? What does a CWO do? This is probably a blog that goes right to her website. I think a blog on her website. I think this is so well done to have this here because if somebody's not willing to do this, they're going to skim here and they're like, that gives me more substantiation. A lot of purchases, especially if you're like a educator creator or a service-based creator are considered purchases. They have to think and consider carefully whether they want to buy from you. This is an opportunity to help them. You're helping them consider. You don't want to minimize their thinking. You want to facilitate it, make it easy, because if it's not easy, people don't have time. They have options and the options are not you. Nadine makes it easy. Um, of course, here is your higher end conversion is the actual services. What does she do? What can you pay her to do for you? That's right here. I think this is the right order. Low risk conversion. That's the highest priority from a business perspective is get people in your ecosystem. Further description for considered purchases. People who are usually already subscribed may come back and read this later. And then over here, we're looking at what are the services you provide? The interesting thing is if you keep scrolling, her final one here is the, her Substack, and it talks more about her personally. There are different types of buyers. There are people who are more trusting or have more disposable money or have more immediate need. They don't need to think very deep to know that Nadine's the right person to work with. But then for every one of those, there's a bunch of people who are deeply considered purchases that may take a long time before they're willing to reach out. This is an opportunity to nurture them without having to make them good on your email list. Such a smart usage, whether this is a blog or some other, um, on, it could be a LinkedIn newsletter. If you have a LinkedIn newsletter, that's a great way to put it there too. Um, such a smart usage of space here. I don't think there's any right or wrong way to have one, two, three, or four or infinite numbers of these. Um, the more clicks they have to make, the less likely they are to make them. So select carefully, but I like the selection that Nadine did here. Again, the branding on point. An area of improvement though, for this section, LinkedIn offers you the chance to leave the platform with one of these links, right? Let's say I want to click on this. What is a chief writing officer? I click on the image. It expands the image, adds the description here, and you can see this view button. 
So I'm gonna be able to click on that button if I wanna leave LinkedIn. This is a two-click exit. LinkedIn did this on purpose. They don't want you to leave the platform. If you have a card title, which is fractional uh, chief writing officer, and if you have a card description, which is what does a CWO do? You have this preview, then you click to leave. You usually get three clicks to get somebody to do something you want them to do. You spent two of them just to get them off LinkedIn. An opportunity for improvement here is the less number of clicks you have, the more likely you are to convert people. Utilize copy in the images up here to reduce the need for copy here. If you do not have a card description, so if this card had just fractional chief writing officer and that was it, clicking on this card immediately loads the destination link. It skips that preview panel that popped up that you saw. So what I would do is like she did in this card where it says write wiser and then download in curly font, I would have what does a CWO do as the top of this card, put some copy in here, maybe reposition the face a little bit, and you can still have CWO on there for consistency of the curly font. It also it aids with skimming. The curly is a little bit hard to read. Um, and I think having a little bit of the print font there is probably helpful, but the fact that it's printed immediately beneath in a, in a, serif, a sans serif font is such a useful tool anyway that I don't mind that it's curly. Um, but if she did that, she'd reduce a click and she'd be able to get more um, traffic going through. So that would be an area of improvement for all of these links. Look for opportunity to use copy in the image rather than copy in description. Again, headline is good, description is extra. Um, you can write a whole lot more if you wanted to. I just think from a growth marketing perspective, the less friction in the buyer journey, the better. All right, let's go down further. So activity section. This is populated by what you do on LinkedIn, but it is customizable. And I think Nadine made a good choice here as a writer to feature her articles. Um, you, the default view is to have it show posts, which is just your most recent three posts. Um, not a wrong thing to do. It's a great way for people who just want to consume what you've done recently if you're just keeping up with them. But we're business people, right? We're creators trying to make a living as creators. And so if we're on LinkedIn, we have to make sure this serves an objective, a business objective, not just socializing because we maybe don't want to have a hard time getting a job later, which is what a lot of people use LinkedIn for. Nadine's choice of articles is so important because again, if you're a writer selling writing services or writing knowledge, your ability to prove that you can write is paramount. She's got articles written on LinkedIn. Now, LinkedIn articles are not posts. Articles are longer content. Um, and the fact that she's featuring long form content here is great. There's a call to action down here that says see more or see all articles. Great off ramp, right? So think of traffic, like you're driving down a highway, right? And the end of the road where it stops, that's the buy now work with Nadine button. These are off ramps. This is a rest stop to, to, to go off and read and recharge. This is a hotel. If you need to sleep and get on the road again in the morning, rest up. These are all different things because there's different people on the road at the same time, not just one car. You've got fam you got people on the, in the road who, who need to rest, people on the road who need to sleep and take way longer. And you've got people who want to just haul all the way down and get it done. The profile needs to do all of those things. And what I've seen so far is there doesn't seem to be a gap in what Nadine's created here. She's addressing all of those different stages of the buyer journey. Um, you know, you can have comments and videos, et cetera, all different types of real estate here, but her choice for articles is the right one for her. Choose the right one for you if you're optimizing yours. If you're a video first creator, you should have videos, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I do want to go in on the about page. This is an opportunity, the about section. This is a great bit right here to further the trust. If somebody's getting this far down in the profile, get to think about where they are. They've committed time, right? They're considering. What are they considering? They're probably trying to consider like, is this somebody I want to follow? Is this, I, I see what you do now, but is this somebody worth keeping in my ecosystem, in my orbit? And again, this is an opportunity for curiosity gap to come into play because there's a see more here. You have a limited number of characters that are displayed and then see more. No copywriting job is too large, nor is an absent content, content strategy too intimidating. In one line of skimming, I know what she does. She's not afraid of big copywriting jobs, and she's not afraid of having to step in before you have a strategy figured out. I now know what she's not. I know she's not a tiny content writer. I know she's not the sort of content writer that requires you to bring her a strategy and she'll just execute. This is a huge amount of progress made. I keep reading it. It says, tap into the grit that only a career in startups can guarantee and a love of all things marketing. 
I now know even more about her. So we've added from the, the headline, the six words in her banner, to the headline that tells a little bit more context, to the hashtags that are a little bit more, all the way down to here now where I know more about the background fueling what she delivers, differentiation. This is what's happening right here. And it says, there's a call to action, drop me a line for a tailored quote. Two things. One, I love the language where it's a tailored quote. It lets you know, hey, this is an off-the-shelf pricing. I'm going to give you something very special. The second thing, the mastery of character count throughout her profile. Do you know how hard it is to write something that does says what you want to say, does what you want to do, and doesn't roll past the seam or with a line break? This is exceptionally well done. This is, this is why Nadine is an expert in her space of writing. This is well done. I see this done wrong a whole lot. You can use the dot, it'll do a dot, dot, dot if you have too many characters before the end of a sentence. You can use that as a curiosity gap. But the dot, dot, dot's all the way down over here because she did the line breaks just right. I want to read more. I do. I absolutely, before you do, you can see here like top scales, creative strategy, content marketing. Again, we're repeating what are the things that she does well in this context. We're layering trust. I'm following this person. I'm already following this person. That's what I want. But I got to read. Vetting content writers. This is the perfect thing to put below the fold. Why? Who clicks read more on the about section? Guys, it's people who are considering you carefully, whether you're the right creator to work with. Vetting content writers. If I'm clicking read more on a content writer's page, I'm vetting them. This is proving to me that she knows who I am. She sees me. When we practice listening, we become intuitive. When you listen to your audience, you have intuitive writing. It's not creepy. I feel respected by this writing. So again, you'll be hitting experience. She starts writing, singing her own praises. Not I'm awesome, I'm amazing, and other people suck, but specific and relevant things that make her valuable to work with. This is so well done, especially again, if you're a service-based or an educator creator, this is very well done. I also like that she brought in um, a bit of her personality. This is important on LinkedIn. LinkedIn gets really dry and let's face it, we're, we're people. Like I like where people do business with people, you need to have humanity in here. I like that this is here. Does it add a ton of value from a business perspective? Quantifiably, that's hard to say, but I do think it's very interesting because she goes, she hides cats and uh, coffee icons in photos that accompany her LinkedIn microblog with like a post as a microblog. It's a hobby, but it's substantiated with specific engagement relative to her content. It's personality that keeps people focused on the business objective, which is consider following me, right? Learning fresh SEO digital strategy. Again, talking about her abilities. So smart here. Trying hard to make you smile with my lack of LinkedIn decorum. Hashtag cats was up front. I was up at the top of the profile above the, above the scroll right now, but like, Again, it's coming back through personality throughout. It's not isolated. It's not random. It's pattern recognition. I'm building trust from consuming this profile. And then she goes down to talk about her true business, the brand name of what she is, right? Wiser and what does she do? But this, you see this pen? That's an emoji. I, I don't know if I can highlight it. If I can point to a dark mode, it's kind of hard, but there's a pen right down here. That's the same pen that's in her headline. That simple, it's, it's a callback. It's that all of these callbacks are part of what you do really well with a profile that gets people to move down the funnel towards wanting to consume more of you. I think the last thing I want to touch on here is the experience section. Um, there's so much to like, there's skills and endorsements and that's great because endorsements are social proof. It's important to have those there. Um, but if this journey, if I've scrolled through, one of the main things people usually scroll to to just understand at least what's your current job or what's your current role or your current business? What are you doing is a LinkedIn question. We try to figure out like, what do you do? What she does here is she's got her title, founder and CWO, right, Wiser? This is great. I now know what CWO stands for because of what she did above. Shorthand, callback. One sentence about what it is that she does. Because again, you read the about section. I think that's great. I think that's enough. Like we don't have to do too much lifting here. And LinkedIn lets you put media links. So this could be a carousel of testimonies. This could be a photo. This could be a variety of things or hyperlinks, which is what she's done here. When you click on those hyperlinks, they'll open a page. Like if I click on this, it's going to open, let's load it up. Uh, it's going to be a blog, how to slip humor into your writing. Wonderful. But here's the thing. 
I couldn't really tell at first glance, let me come back to this section right here. I couldn't really tell at first glance what I was gonna get when I clicked on these. So this is an opportunity for improvement, right? If you're going to have an image, the image needs to do some work. These are probably populated right off the blog. That's okay, LinkedIn scrapes things, it makes it easy. But you can upload a custom image and this is an opportunity to do that. Upload a custom image that tells you what to expect or helps you understand it. Further, when you upload these links, you can actually put copy in these links uh, next to each image. Uh, I'll show you an example of that. I did that on my profile. And again, I'm not perfect. I don't wanna say that I have the perfect profile and I constantly evolve these things for myself. But if you look here, um, this is an example, right? So the gym is my private community for creators. Nadine's a member. Um, the gym is your community of creator economy training partners. Now, when you click on this link, I got the little triangle in the graphic. It says the gym with an arrow. It's underneath the fact that I'm a community manager of my own community describing what we do. There's a little bit of description. This is what I would have recommended to see differently on Nadine's profile. You can put more than one of these. They'll stack up. I think this is an excellent way to give a little more clarity on what that point of conversion is going to do. Because if I don't understand... I have no compelling reason to click. So I'm gonna go back. Let's head back over to Nadine's profile. I just think there's a few areas of improvement, right? But to be fair, Nadine's profile is better than 95% of the profiles out there already. Like, can we optimize? Yes, and I love optimizing. That's what we talk about in the gym. When we do these meetings and we work regularly to with each other, we go in here, there's like an Ask Mike Anything where people just grill me and I sit in the hot seat and I just do this stuff for people. Um, but that said, Look at where she is. Like, like how many other profiles are just bland, like reproductions of their company or don't even have all the stuff filled in. If you're a creator and you want to leverage LinkedIn, this is how you do it to drive business, not just get a job. Nadine gets this done very well. And again, when you scroll back up, this is very obvious. Like if I've consumed that much, she's getting a bell ring from me. I want to know what she does. I want to follow her more. I want to consume more. Maybe I've been following her and I viewed this profile for the second or third time and I'm ready to start looking at what her uh, professional services are. Everything you need, whether you're brand new, like we did at the beginning, we pretended we found her in the feed for the first time, to somebody who's been following her for a while and is now ready to consider because they're in market for a service, Nadine's top of mind and it's very, very easy to convert from here to doing business with her. If you like this creator critique and you wanna see more of them, drop a comment with people you want me to critique, even if it's you. And if you want personalized feedback on a regular basis, consider joining Nadine and I in the gym. The gym is my private community for creators all across platforms, all across the internet, for us to come together and grow stronger mindset and skill set and become a better creator. Being a solopreneur, a creator can be a lonely business, but you don't have to go it alone. If you want more information, I'll put a link in the description of this video. I'll also link back to Nadine's LinkedIn profile so you can check her out there. But thank you guys so much for watching today. As always, I'm Mike Phillips, your personal growth marketer. Always be growing.